prepared t test. Let's have a look about prepared t test and what we should uh, be looking at. A researcher thought drinking caffeine would improve reaction times. So we've got eight students tested reaction tests before caffeine and after caffeine. So you can see that each student will have a before time and an after time. And so this is why it's called a paired t test. Um, here's all the data in here. You'll see eight students, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now what we have to do is we have to process this because we're looking for the difference now between the two times. So the difference here, and here we can just type in um, R2 minus R1. And so this is a variable reference. And oh, we'll just do that again. Equals R2 minus R1. And I've got to tell it it's actually a variable reference. The second one's a variable reference, and that should just calculate the differences. Okay. Now, so we're looking for negatives. So if there's an improvement in reaction time, these numbers here should be negative. Now, is there sufficiently overall negative to think there's an overall improvement? Well, it looks like there's definitely an improvement in the sample. Okay, but don't forget this sample is being drawn from a, a population, let's say, of high school students. So the statistical test is to find out is there a significant difference in the reaction times after and before caffeine, um, not just in the sample, but how much we can infer to the entire population. Okay, So we just need these differences here we're going to analyse. So let's go back to our sheet here. And in here we're actually going to do a pair t test. And so have a look at the null and the alternate hypothesis. Now the null is always that there's, there's, there's nothing happening in the populations. Okay, So the population mean reaction time um, after caffeine is equal to before caffeine. But that's always the null hypothesis. It doesn't matter what you, you as a researcher think might be the link. As a researcher, what you think might be the link is usually reflected in the alternate hypothesis. So you think the population mean reaction time after caffeine is lower. So it's kind of like a one-tailed t-test. So let's go back to our data. And now in the first available box here, we're going to go perform the hypothesis test menu. Statistics, this is a stat test, and actually it's a t-test now. So we're going to look at the um, the differences, and here the data is there. Um, so the population mean we're actually going to say is zero, because if we took the mean times after caffeine and subtracted the mean time before caffeine, if there was no difference at all, which is what we're assuming, then the overall um, population mean should be zero. Uh, the list here is a list of differences. And the alternate is that our mean is actually lower than zero. Okay, so it should be negative overall. And again, just to reiterate, just because the sample is negative, it's less than zero, doesn't necessarily mean that that will apply to the whole population. So we're just looking for the p-value now. And as we scroll down here, for this particular sample, let's just cancel that, we can see the p-value is 0 0.0305. So this is actually a 3.05%. Now if we go back to our sheet here, and we just scroll down, and we have a little look here, our p-value was 3.05%. So let's have a little look. Um, our p-value is less than the 5% level of significance, in which case we are going to reject the null. Uh, there is significant evidence to suggest that Caffeine improves reaction times, okay? And that, that conclusion is actually inferring for the entire population. So if we took our sample of those eight people, it's a pretty small sample size, a little bit bigger might be better. Uh, but if we took that sample of students from, let's say, the entire high school population, then this, this conclusion is actually inferring the whole high school population rather than just the eight people in the sample. That's why we do a statistical test.